What's happening, people? Welcome to the Boom Boom Room. Yeah, the Boom Boom Room with your host, BFL. SEC legend Ron Slay. I got a special guest, special, special guest in here today. That is my guy. Let me give you a little introduction. So a little appetizer for the Boom Boom Room. Back in 2021, we ain't been here in a minute, but we back. Back in effect. Here we go. Let you know who we got in the house. <laughs> Willie Taylor, what's up, bro? Whatever. How Whatever you doing, man? What up, bro? I'm good, man. Appreciate you coming on with the people, man, and you know, sharing your time with us on this beautiful Sunday before this All Star game takes place. You know what I mean? Man, all right. Man, man, let's dive straight into it. You see the highlights right there, looking like a dude that plays above the rim. And for people that don't know, this man been playing above the rim for a long, 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 long time now. I'm talking about. Way, way, way before it was cool to be playing <laughs> Butler of the Rim. You know what I'm saying? So, man, before we dive into that bump, tell me a little bit about what gave you the love for the game of basketball. Man, what gave me the love for the game? Man, Ron, I had to say that date back to uh, my sister. Okay. Man, my sister loved Michael Jordan, and and I just took off with it from her, you know, and – uh uh, watching WGN, watching the Bulls play, and mm-hmm. just just having that imaginative mind, and just going back out in the backyard and mimicking everything that I just watched. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's where like the love for me came from. Man, and yeah. you, you can see it. Like the people that that do know you, that don't know you, man. The the love for Jordan. Um, you just mentioned the Bulls. You can you can see it. You got it tatted <laughs> on you. You know what I mean? Um. You got to tell it on you. You always see Willie Bunkin and some Jordan somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That's a part. That's a part of you. Um, Take me back to the beginning. To the beginning. When did you pick the ball up? When did you put it in your hands? Uh, I picked the ball up, man. Wow. Believe it or not, Ron. uh, Rest in peace is my aunt Pat. Uh, Mm -hmm. She died, but um, she bought me a Nerf basketball goal, bro, when I was – one of the jumps you put above the, on the door. Yeah. Bought one of them jumps when I was like five or six, man. And and I just loved it, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just loved it. Watching, watching playground and come fly with me, man. It was just on from there, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm a big fan of that, too, man. That's when we was back there with VHS, ta- VHS tapes. You know what I mean? This this yeah. before y'all. You know what I mean? You, you younger listeners, younger generation, we was popping in the VHS Rewinding that thing over and over and over, trying to watch it, you know. So, you brought, you got the love, you got the love of basketball, watching, watching things like that. When did you start playing competitive basketball? Me, I started about six, seven years old. Um, Music City, uh, not Music City, uh, but the pro, not the pro, yeah, the Junior Pro League at Maplewood. That was my first introduction to really organized basketball. Talk about yours. Me personally, uh, my started at uh, St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Black Catholic School in the heart of the city. Um, we started. We had they started basketball probably in the second, third grade, mm-hmm. and uh, we was on a team. So I joined the team then, and it just really took off from that, man. I can really still remember uh, my first game I ever played in, dog, and. Uh, I stole the ball at half court, Ron. Yeah. And when I tell you, I was so happy to have stole the ball, bro. I just took <laughs> off and ran to the basket, dog. 
<laughs> and then layup, bro, you couldn't have told me nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember that like it was yesterday, dog. And it was a whole travel, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we see your love of basketball, man. Give me give me some inspirational people in your life. Um just outside of basketball, just in general. In uh, I had to say my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, she just retired, working at Bridgestone, 35 years. Uh, my dad, he's 75, still out here working. Uh, mm -hmm. They just they just always work, man. We never had, you know what I mean, just really, me personally, I never really just had to want for anything. My parents made sure that uh, morals and values was instilled in me, and uh, I just had, I had to say my parents, man. Yeah. That's big time. Now, inside of basketball, uh, was there any other outside of Jordan and the Bulls that really inspired you? Uh, maybe locally now. For people that don't know, Willie Taylor is from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, talk about some people that maybe they inspired you um, right on the basketball scene. Uh, people that inspired me. Outside of Jordan, run, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not me, it wasn't no. a whole lot. I mean, yeah. My sister played high school ball. She was decent, and uh, you know, it took my it took her turning. Uh, I think she was eleven. My sister's five years older than me, so she turned eleven, and my dad bought her basketball goal to put up in the backyard. Mm. And from the day she got that, man, it just it, just, it was just me and her. It trickled down to you, huh? Kind of like a uh, kind of like a Reggie Miller, Cheryl Miller type thing. Mm. We went at. Uh -huh. Yeah, man, we got a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people tuning in too, man. Uh, shout out to Gates, uh, Kevin Gates, Boosie Howler, uh, Boosie Howler said that man can hoop. Uh, got Alan Williams, my guy. Um, he was Al. Down, yeah, Al, Al was down at the, at the base in Avellino when in them, them days, you know what I mean. Yeah. So that's that uh, shout out to him. Uh, um, Kenza, Marcus Kenza joined in, but a lot of people tuning in, man. Boosie, shout out to you, Boosie. We're gonna get you on the show too, Boosie. Don't you trip. Don't you worry. We gotta we gotta hear that story too. But Bump, okay, take me, take me through it. Middle school, you at St. Vincent, right? Yeah. So you you trained Middle School I'm at St. Vincent. Yep. Yeah. So how was that? How was that experience for you as far as your name blowing uh, up? To tell you the truth, Ron, if you can remember, that's that's what me and you I know uh met. I know. Uh, I used to rule the playgrounds in my penny loafers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I was hard out there. <laughs> and one day, it was somebody I seen out on the court I hadn't seen before, and and he shared that same passion that I had for. It. And I never forget that day, bro, because like I went home, and told my mom and dad, "Hey, it's another dude of me, just like me." <laughs> and come back weekend, and you would give a transfer. Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, bro. That's when we met. Believe it or not, bro. It sure yeah. was. Hey, man, so shout out to St. Vincent. Man, that was that was St. Vincent Private School, dog. Hey, man, some great memories there. I, and Bunk is right, man. I was I was there for a brief moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. We linked. <laughs> was having a good time, and then next thing I know, my mama had me in home school. I was back at home. I was like, darn, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, But I knew who you were then. You know what I mean? And you were more advanced than a lot of people. You know, you know, uh so yeah. talk about the work that you put in before we get to the point of high school. Uh talk about the work you were putting oh. in. Uh, Ron, it's, it's I wouldn't really call it work, man. It was more passion. So mm -hmm. I won't say it was work, man. I was just really passionate about basketball. If we weren't talking about basketball, we really wasn't having a conversation. Right. That's what really I was, man. I I was outside all day, every day in my backyard. My mom had to tell me to come in the house. You know yeah. what I mean? Street lights, it's raining outside, hands numb from the snow. <laughs> it was just, the sun is just really, really passionate about, bro. Yeah. I put in a lot of work. I, I lot remember. Of work. I remember. <laughs> so you get ready to go to high school. You see things buzzing. And you been in the inner city of Nashville. You don't go to school. In high school and in the city, you go to a county school. Talk about that 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 transition. Uh, well, my mom. Uh, and what school it was mom, you went to? 
Yeah, my, I went to Laverne High School. My mm-hmm. mom um, worked at Bridgestone, retired mm-hmm. for 35 years, and uh, we moved from out South Nashville to uh, Laverne. And uh, me, me and my sister and my mom sat down and, and just made the conscious decision that, hey, you can stay out South with your dad and go to Glencliff. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying, you come up here to Laverne where, you know, the, the pickings ain't, you know, necessarily the best. You right. can't really make a name for yourself. So I thought about that, and, and looking back on it, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So if you were to stay in Nashville, what school of you would you have went to? What public school would you have Glenclair. I would have been to Glenclair. Glenclair. Boy, they sure could have used you, boy. Man, they could have used you. I would have got lost in the South. I, <laughs> I got lost in the South. I don't know, Bunk. I don't know, Bunk. <laughs> I, I, I can see you and Gerald McCray running the wings now, dog. That's, woo. That's a little yeah. different. That's a different matchup, you know what I mean? That, for that, teams. Yeah. Shout out to Shout out to Jared, though. That's my guy. Yeah, that, that would have been tough. And Kenza. That's my guy. Yeah. yeah Kenza running the point. Been it. Yeah, y'all would have Because y'all. playing playing with Kenza and AU and and, and and shout out to Kenza, man. He he really helped me on my journey because, you know, that, that dude, you know like I know, that's a basketball man. Mm-hmm. And he seen what I had, and, and, and I seen what he had, and he said, Bunk, all I want you to do is run. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get on that wing and run, and he would find me, and it was how it hit him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, your, so your freshman year, Bunk, you're at Laverne High School. You walk into it, you're the guy right away? I'm – first of all, it was a culture shock. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Coming from all black Catholic school, man. Mm-hmm. I had never been around any other – you know what I mean? Ethnicity. Uh, so that was a big culture shock for me. But, you know, it was well taken. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like I was I was the man. I was short. You know, I hadn't hit that growth spur yet. Mm-hmm. I, I stepped on my campus my freshman year. I was 5'8". Wow. 100 pounds wet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Athletic had ability had always there. The skill level. Yeah. Was the athletic ability always there? What you say, Ron? Uh, I think the athletic ability was always there, Ron. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just needed, I just needed some something to go with it. Right, right. So you started to mature. You started to mature. How'd your freshman campaign go? Yeah, my freshman year went good. Uh, I played, um, I played freshman ball. Like I said, I was really short. Uh, between my freshman year and sophomore year, I, I went from five eight to like six two. You know, mm-hmm. over a summer, so that 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 helped a whole lot. Right. Yeah. That, that's, that's Freshman year went really good though. We were uh, county champs, um, and and just built it and worked all summer. And then next year I was uh, on the varsity. Mm. When you get the varsity, your sophomore year, what was it? Was it butterflies? Was it man? I'm supposed to be in here. I'm happy to be here. Let me make a splash. Let me get my name out here. You see what's taking sp- taking place down the road in Nashville. At that point, Nashville is bubbling. The um, um, public schools, right. Pearl, White Creek, Glencliff, Maplewood, all, all the public schools yeah. are doing good, man. You know what I mean? The competition level is high. It's a lot of competition. You are in the county school, and you start to get on varsity. Are you itching to make your name? You making a splash? Talk about, talk about that journey. Well, I think I, I made a big splash. Uh, the height thing, uh, my coach mm-hmm. felt it necessary that I play point guard at that point. And that was a position that I was not accustomed to as far as getting others involved. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, all I knew was, you know what I mean? Score that the head down and go. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but it worked out good, man. It was, uh, my sophomore year was a really le- uh, a learning curve for me. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of comments, but at the same time, it was, it was, a, it was a learning curve. Yeah. Uh, that I took in stride, and I think that summer was the summer that I got with uh, Don Woods over there. Uh-huh. And, you know, we butted it every day all summer, but <laughs> the, the, the work that we put in, man, it, it it made that next junior campaign, like, easy. Right, right. Now, now let's touch on that for a second, AU, because AU now, compared to AU then, totally different. You know what I'm saying? Um, totally different. Yeah. <clears throat> wasn't 45 teams in the city uh, that you could go play for. 
it was two or three teams at the time. Right. And, you know what I mean, it was the best of the best. We had a crop of guys you could pull from. Each AAU had had they, 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 they team that was that was loaded. And you go on, and it means something to play. You know what I mean? It ain't yeah. no all these – the uh, the circus or the Nike EYBL Adidas Under Armour whatever it may be at that point you got to get to nationals to get your name out there and if you get the nationals you know you got something popping. Talk about the, yeah. the competition yeah. level and what it meant in AU not losing and then saying okay we lost we're gonna go play uh, two more games we got three more games left knowing you lose you go home. Talk yeah. about that experience in AU. Well, I ain't you experience, man. I mean, you know, like I know, man. Music City, Music City players. Mm-hmm. That was that was what it was. Uh, I can remember a time when I was young, in my freshman year, and just going over to Pearl and watching uh, Coach Rich Gerald's and y'all's practices, man. I mean, you could hear a pin drop over there. That's how mm-hmm. much respect those guys had for that man, dog, and 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 the level of competition that was in that gym, man, right. man. Right. It, it was it was it was it was a sight to see. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, Buck and Maven and Hassel and man, it was just uh, so much talent in that gym, man. And, God, you know, you're it was serious. Like I know, man. That was that was that was fun. It was serious. Yeah. It was serious. So you were you were Don Woods, and you take you take that AU, and you're the guy on that team. You know what I mean? Let's let, let's be honest. You you're the guy on that team. What was that? What was that experience like in the AU? Well, Ron, I really never thought that I was the guy on that team. I just yeah, I know you did. Play my role. I know you did, but this this this, listen. Let me cut it. Let me cut you off real quick. Listen, (laughs) this the boom boom room. Ain't no sugar (laughs) coating in the boom boom room. So you ain't have to think you was the guy. I'm telling you from the outside looking in what it looked like. You know what I'm saying? Like when if it's time to game plan. You know who gonna get the ball. You know what he gonna do every time, man. Stop bump. Stop with it. Like number yeah. four, stop him. Yeah. Like hold up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like put a put a halt to it. So yeah. you know what I mean. Looking at it though, the, the name 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 me if you can, if you remember then. Name me a couple guys that you went up against. You know, maybe an AU, and you looked at, and you was like, dang. You know, and you matched up well, and you you figured. You know what I mean? Like uh, okay. I might got some here. You know, I can play on this level. This is a different type of level, but I can play on this level. Right. Okay. Well, from the first day I walked in over there at uh, practice with Coach Woods, you had uh, uh, Kenzo was there. Uh-huh. Uh, you had Wimp over Maplewood. Yep. Uh, Kizzy. Kizzy. It, it was It was a McCray. Yep. It was a lot of people on the team. Kwanye from Brentwood. Uh-huh. Uh, Gosh, there's so many guys on there. That team was stacked, man. Yeah, I know. All the dishes, man. We had it. I know. We had it. <laughs> God, that was a good time. Yeah. So how? So so talk about your experience in AU first. Um, getting, uh, going to play and what? Um, how far you guys made it? Who were some of the, maybe the notable guys that you guys remember playing against? Um, man, so many guys, Ron. Um. Mm-hmm. But as far as uh, us winning, we always went to the Nationals. Every year we went to the Nationals. And the plan was to just go as deep as possible and just get as many people coming to those games as we can to see what we had growing. Right. Um, I can still remember the the very next time that me and you played, when we talking about that, next time me and you played, we were supposed to play in a championship game at Vanderbilt mm-hmm. uh, for, for AAU State champion. That year, I don't, what year was it, Ron? That was uh, I don't, I don't remember what year. It was. I want to say that the was going before that. I broke my ankle. Yeah, I want to say that was um, junior. Was it going into the junior year? Mm, it might have been, bro. I know mm-hmm. I broke my ankle the game before we played y'all, and y'all yeah. just drug it out of the gym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next day. Yep. Yep. So I I remember that. I, I want to say I want to say it was a. Like, was it a, was it a what Cumberland? No, it was a Vandy. It was a Vandy. It was a Vandy. Yeah. yeah, I just remember our team. We had uh, Desmond, Little Terry, Andre Stalin, Jr. 
Like we we had a pretty good team. We had a pretty good team then yeah, too. Yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah. that was the matchup everybody was waiting to see. So uh yeah, that was, right. that, was that was that was gonna that was gonna be cold. So let's go to let's go to your yeah yeah back to Laverne. You go back to Laverne and your name is bubbling around the city. Yeah, you know uh, Laverne, like, man, my junior year I took off, man. That whole summer, like I said, uh my 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 skill level came more in tune with my body mm-hmm. and um uh, I went to a like blue blue star camp. I went to a five star camp up in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And my summer was just full of basketball. So by the time I got back from my junior year, I, I was just ready, Ron. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I remember my name being honorable mention all state. You know, for my after my sophomore year, honorable mention. You know, that's way, way, way down there, right. but. Just to see your name on there, you know what I mean? They do something for you. But I told myself, man, like I can get I can get way farther above on that list in this mm-hmm. right here. Mm-hmm. And that was my mindset. And my junior year, man, it just everything came together, man. Yeah, I just I tried to dunk on anybody that was standing under their goal. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? As many times as I can. Now you made the you made yeah, the one was, leg you made the one leg infamous. Coming off the one leg, <laughs> palm the ball, stretching out, taking yeah. off and dunking it. You was infamous yeah. for that right there. Like if you if nobody knew anything about Willie Taylor, you knew exactly what it was when you walked in the gym to watch him play. Do not let him get ahead of steam, cause you gonna end up on the post. <laughs> it's facts. You know what I mean? And I remember, I remember Bunk, um, I remember you bringing me up there to work out a couple of times. And at that point, I was I was a guy more I was I was playing off a lot of talent you know what I mean right. and just a dog like you said with the passion but dog. to be able to go up there and see you at Laverne like you had keys to the gym you was able to get <laughs> into the gym like that was my first time being able to see like a dude working and you know we went up there and lifted then we shot you know what I mean got shots up and I was thinking to myself man the whole time we was leaving like oh this dude serious Bunk serious about this like. This man in here by himself, you know what I mean? You're doing this every day. I just happen to go along for the ride this day. You brought me up there with you, but I'm like, darn, like, this is this is it. Like, this is what you hear about in documentaries of a guy going in there, getting it in early, getting it yeah. in late, all the times that you put in. And it gave yourself that confidence, you know what I mean, going into your junior year, and you exploded, you know what I mean, with a different type of confidence. Oh, yeah. Talk about you the numbers. About you remember wrong. the numbers you put up that junior year? Cause there was some silly. My junior year, uh, I think I just—I don't know what I think I averaged a little over 22, 23 mm-hmm. a game. My junior year, mm-hmm. um, I probably shot a high percentage because, like I said, most of them was dunk. You definitely did. But uh, my coach, uh, Coach Miller, uh, he installed a lot of faith in me and confidence in me. Man, I used to call him so much about getting into the gym mm-hmm. that he was just like, "Hey, Will, listen, man, I feel like you're a good kid here. You take this key and." You know what I mean? Just lock the door when you come in and out of here. You know, I got to know the janitor really good, <laughs> yeah. first name basis, and man, you know, it was just the place to be. Yeah, you know, was two, deep. three in the morning, I'm at home, you know what I'm saying? My mama, hey, I'm going to go down to the gym, mama. She trusted me enough to do that, man. So I just camp out in there a lot. Yeah, hey, and that, you got it done, dog. And you can see, you can see the, um, the work you put in, man, and, and it come out on the court. That was that was that was something good to see. It let me know Appreciate that, it, bro. Yeah, you let me know that. You know, I, I ain't never, I ain't even never told you that, but it let me know, man. It's it's some work <laughs> to be done. You know what I mean? Like I, I can see where I remember that. Dog. Yeah, I can see where where you get comfortable. You know what I mean? Because you're in there all the time. So that that was something I, I, I yeah. took from that. So yeah, sure, salute you for that, man. But let's go into your senior Thanks, year, bro. bro. Go into your senior year. What's your mind frame at this point? You know what I mean? What's recruiting like at this point going into your senior year? Talk a little bit about that. Uh, going into my senior year, I had to make a, a big decision. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I visited uh, Coach Hopkins up at uh, Mount Zion in Carolina. Joel and, uh, Hopkins, wanted, people. <laughs> yeah, old Joe. He wanted <laughs> me to come up there. And, uh, and you know, my, my, my principal uh, – the principal at my school at the time was Jan Stopper. Uh, he was Bobby Knight's assistant coach okay. in, uh, at Indiana University when they won it in 78. That was my principal. 
You know what I mean? That's so crazy. you know how I never knew that. Come in your house and, and into the boom boom room is, is orange, UT everywhere. That's what my principal's office was at Laverne High School. I'm talking about Indiana, Indiana everything. everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He used to send me in his office and tell me how he recruited Larry Bird. You know what I mean? Really? He got Larry Bird on Indiana's campus. He was there. Wow. And was just homesick. You know what I mean? So that's why he went back. But wow. he said he recruited him. He got him there and uh Basically, my mom and uh, principal and my coach sat me down and was just like, look, uh, you don't have to go way out there to get to where you're going. You know what I mean? You put in the work like you've been putting in the work, and they're going to come. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And uh, from that moment on, I just made the decision to just, just, just weigh it out of the crib and just hope that they come. Man, you know what, Bunk, man, looking back on it, um, man, Mount Zion was, Mount Zion was a, they, they were – Slick powerhouse. T Mac was already oh, yeah. taken off and elevated them. They had guys Corey Hightower, Derek Payne, right. like the list goes on and on. Marquise Daniels ended up playing now. Hargett, John B. Hargett, who we had on here before. Man, this is Mount Zion had some talent. Mount Zion definitely has some talent. And they were on yeah. the national scene. So you decided to stay home. You decided to stay home and you thought you could get the work done now. And you did get the work done now. Talk about that going into your senior year. Well, going to my senior year, man, I just full hit of steam, man. Um, I felt like I had developed a little jump shot, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, still trying to dunk on everybody, but at the same time, just trying to progress some uh, day in and day out. Um, and like I said, they 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 came, right? You know what I mean? When they came, like when they saying, came, talk to me. Who came? Who came? Who came? Who came? Who came oh. to see? Cause I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Okay. When I'm looking at it, when I was looking at my recruiting, my junior year wasn't a lot of people coming. You know what I mean? It, it was, I mean, they were coming, but at that point, I really couldn't envision it. You know what I mean? I was just so focused on, man. I'm, I'm out here with Big John. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's players, yeah. it's players everywhere. Like I'm, I'm just happy to be out here on the floor having a good time. You know what I'm saying? And whatever yeah. happened, happened. But. Um, surely people were coming, definitely the letters were coming, you know what I mean, Tennessee, Arkansas, um, uh, those are some, those are some of my favorites, you know what I mean, right offhand, Colorado, yeah, yeah. um, but talk about that, talk, like, who were some of the people that you were looking at, uh, had your attention, um, and who was really showing interest at that time, because what, what kids don't know, person. what kids don't know today, but it's a difference between interest and getting the hard off. You know what I mean? Like they get right. it mixed up. Yeah, they get on right social media and type in there, hey man, I I got 18 teams interested, like no, they they interested in everybody. <laughs> but who's right. really trying to get you on their campus? You know what I'm saying? So talk a little right. bit about that. Who right. who was really trying uh, to rock with you? Like my junior year, uh junior year, like I said, like year wasn't just so much. Mm-hmm. Uh but Coach Padden in Colorado was coming yeah. hard at me. Uh, Coach Padden and, and Leonard Hamilton, who was at, who was at, who was at Miami. Where's yep. Leonard Hamilton? My, Florida, Florida State. State right now. Florida State. Yep. He was at Miami. Yep. He was at yep. Miami at the time. He was at the University of Miami. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, Ron, how that was so crazy, bro. The first letter I ever got was from the Naval Academy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to the Naval. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... After that, after that first letter, bro, it just took off, man. But like mm-hmm. the ones who showed the most interest my junior year would have to be Coach Patton up in Colorado, yep. and, uh, Leonard Hamilton, who's at Florida State right now. Mm-hmm. Um, besides all your local schools and stuff like that, those right. are probably the two biggest schools. Right. And again, I thought I was going one of those two places. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would really be thought good. I was going to Colorado. Though. Hey, man, I'm gonna tell you what. Now, people listening, I'm gonna have to get them on the show, man. Ricardo Patton, Coach Ricardo Patton, man, he was down here at TSU for a while and left and went to Colorado. Dude, he had a pipeline down here that he was getting guys. Like, it was, he was trying to, he was doing what Tennessee State University should have been doing. Like, he was trying to put a gate around the state, of, where, not, just the surrounding yeah. cabins with Nashville. Like, he was on people. Like, I, I was one of the teams that I really felt the love from, too was Colorado. Like, they were after it, man. You know what I mean? That, that yes. made a difference. Yes, they were, bro. They were showing a lot of love, man. And oh, Coach and Patton. that school, my other school would, be, would have been uh, UNLV, Coach mm-hmm. Sarkane. 
Yeah, I like, I like Tark, man. He's Tark was that guy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah. So, um, you go into your senior year, have a, a really good senior year, numbers, numbers-wise, numbers through the roof. What brings... Numbers through the roof, senior what, year. What what did, what did, what did what did that look like? What did them numbers look like? How far did you go? Tell the people how far you went at Laverne High School senior year. Ah, uh, because you're in the paper every day. This ain't no Instagram or nothing like that. You in the paper yeah. every single day, bro. I never got to Murfreesboro, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. For me, I wanted to be down there playing against you know, saying whoever yeah. and all South Nash were there, and you know, I just never got that, but. Yeah. The numbers was through the roof, man. I probably averaged 28, 30 points my, my senior year. Yes. And I what I take from my senior year, bro, is what I told you at the beginning, man. Seeing my name on that honorable mention all state, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just to see myself climb, you know. And then my senior year, I'm um, first team all state with, mm-hmm. with your boy Vince and yep. Paris London and, uh, and, 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 and who you, uh, who your boy from Brainerd? Uh, Harris Walker. Harris Walker, yep. you know what I mean? It was just, I, I felt like I had become right. at that point in time. Right. I, 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 was, I was where I wanted to be. And there were some dogs in that class, man. Y'all had some real live dogs and some go-getters. And, whew, that was tough. So to make that list and, and set that standard, <laughs> that's, that, that means a lot, man. So the yeah, recruiting, yeah. the recruiting trail, how do you go about it and how do you go about picking Georgetown? To go play for the great Ooh, John Thompson. Man, that's 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 a simple one right there, Ron. I I watch above the rim every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Every day. And and uh, you know, that dude wanted to go to Georgetown and I and this I've always had a thing for for, for John Thompson. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for him to call the house one day and you know, tell my mom he wanted to sit down with me and her and and, and then just for him to come, you know, to Laverne, you know what I mean? Yeah. Come to my house, I get to sit on the couch with my mom, man. It, it, at that point in time, it was just a wrap. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I, I was going, I was going to be a hoodie. Now tell me, Bump. My dream was fulfilled. Tell me this, man, because it's certain people that have different type of auras um, about them. And... You know, they have a different glow. I say Coach Pat Summit had one, rest in peace. Uh Coach Former, when they were in that run at UT had had that aura. Um Coach Fitzgerald <coughs> has a different type of aura when he walks right. in the room. John Thompson comes walking in and his stature is totally different than a lot of coaches in the NCAA in in Power Five. This man walks in your living room, and this isn't a five nine, five ten guy walking in. You know, this is a guy, <laughs> big center walking in, coming t- coming to get coming to get the job done and close it out. What was that like when he stepped in there? Were you in awe or like, dang? This- I was in awe, bro. Yeah, he had to be down to the house. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was it was it was it was. God, it was surreal, bro. You yeah. know what I mean? My mama, you know, she fixed a big meal. And, and, yeah. And, and, and he just felt so comfortable. You know what I mean? He yeah. felt really comfortable. Him and my mom got along really good. And it was just, it was just ideal. Because I can tell you, Bobby Knight came to my house, too. You know what I mean? See, here we go. Now, this, this, see, this, this is what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> this, is what I, this is what we're trying to dive into right here, man. Spill it on here, man. Like this, yeah, this is different people walking in your living room, dog, in Laverne. Like, talk yeah. to me. My my mom did care for Bobby Knight. Yeah. <laughs> mom Duke did care for Bobby Knight. Um, but yeah, I, I like the guy, you know what I mean? He's yeah. real, real army type, just military type dude, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh I didn't think I needed that type of structure at the point in time in my life, but right. John Thompson, he was everything, man. The father figure, you know what I mean? He he just whatever you can think of, Ron, that man was, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh I think the thing about John Thompson that I love the most, me personally, uh, God rest his soul. Um if you you know, can you cuss on the show? 
Man, it's the boom boom room, man. It's unfiltered, uncensored. Man. Listen, man. Coach, Coach Thompson used to call me all type of bitches and yeah. motherfuckers every day. Yeah. You know? And he made me feel like scum, man. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. But as low as I got, he would always find a way to pull me to the side and tell me how much he loved me. You know what right. I mean? It just he just trying to get it out of him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I respected that. You know what I mean? I think you got a lot of coaches today who tear their players down, but they don't know how to build them up. Uh-huh. That man knew how to build his players up and get the most out of them. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Uh-huh. And that's why he's a Hall of Famer and what he is. You know what I mean? And I loved him for that. If yeah. he would have stayed in Georgetown and, and, and not retired, I would have stayed there. Yeah. Now, let's talk about that, man. You step on campus at, at Georgetown. The, man, when you talk about history, dog, you step on Georgetown. First of all, you in D.C. That's first and foremost. You in Chocolate City. Chocolate City. You in Chocolate City, man. You come from Laverne High School, go to Chocolate City, yeah. dropped in the middle of D.C., Oh, uh, man, and, and then with the rich tradition and history that Georgetown has, you got the likes of all the big men that have played the game. Matombo, man, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Big Pat, you know, Big Pat Ewing, and then the one and only, all, all of yeah. our childhood heroes, Allen Iverson. Like, man, talk about what it was like when you got dropped into Georgetown. Ah, uh, Brian, boy, that, that, that's Country boy going to the big city. That's <laughs> yeah. what that was for me, y'all. Yeah. Coming from Laverne, you know, to DC, bro, I hate I was just wide open, man. You right. know what I mean? Uh I was on Howard campus so much yeah, they thought I went there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh it was all fun and games, man. Like I had a, a great time at Georgetown, man. That 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 place I I, had, I got a lot of fond memories of that place. Uh, my roommate Kevin Braswell. <laughs> we had some really good times, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but all all the ex players should all come up and play. Uh, it was nothing to walk in the gym and Lonzo's in there and Pat's in there and everybody's mm-hmm. stretching and getting ready to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to play with. I, in this lifetime, I can say I got to play with a couple of Hall of Famers. You know what right. I mean? Even if it's in pickleball, right? But those games were really competitive and, and every basket. County. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to play with AI. AI, you know, cut from the same cloth as say like me and you. Right. But you know, he just his bankroll was just crazy. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? You caught him. You caught him in prime. You caught him in prime years too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Uh, shoot, I think on my visit to Georgetown, uh, Philadelphia was playing. Uh, Philadelphia was playing the Wizards, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And they got us to the game, and, wow. you know, I got to just go through all that. So you right. imagine, I was just in Laverne the day before this, yeah. and I'm in, 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 in the MCI Center, mm-hmm. and, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's heavy. hands with all these big names in here, bro. I was, it was crazy. That's heavy there, man. So before we, we before we get into your experience at Georgetown, did you take all your visits um, when being recruited? I think you get five visits, five official visits. Right. Did you take all of your visits? No. Uh, you know, when Coach Thompson came to the house, man, that pretty much the minute. Mm-hmm. He wanted me to he wanted me to get him in before he left the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, you didn't have to do that, but you know, yeah. I was just so happy to to, to tell him, yes, I yeah. want to come to your school. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh before that I I went to uh Virginia Tech, Blacksburg. Mm-hmm. Um it was nice down there, though. I think I could have got something accomplished in Black Blackbird. Yeah. Um, I went to uh, Miami. I went down there. Uh, Coach Hamilton was still there at the time. Uh, who was there, man? Smarty went high that year. I'm not sure, but um, outside of that, those two schools, and I then I went to Georgetown, and, and that was a wrap. Yeah, on those other two visits. That did it. Okay. So, Georgetown, man, you talked about the legendary hoop sessions and everybody that's been to D.C. for a summer. Um, and you talking about hoop session, sessions. You know about the little the little bit of gym that, that, that they're hooping yeah, in at Georgetown, man. man. But the hot box, I mean, getting to it, though. Um, 
So you you go into you go into the year freshman year. Talk about that. Talk about that experience. Talk about the transition uh, of that. Well, Ron, going into my freshman year, man, uh, I just felt like I was ready. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was ready, but at the same time, when I walked into this this arena with all these, you know, Georgetown players, right? Right. They were. I won't say more skilled. Mm-hmm. They were strong. Right. You know what I mean? Like they were lifting weights. You know, they had been on a regiment. I had never lifted a weight in my life. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, it was just a transition, something that I had to go through. I had a lot of just the learning curve, which is totally different. You right. know what I mean? Like my coach Laverne, you know, he 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 did what he had to do for me. Right. Uh, but it was like, give Willie the ball, you know, there's, there's no I in team, but there is in Willie, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that was a thing. So, you know, I went up there thinking I knew the game and I didn't know nothing. Right. Like absolutely nothing. Right. You know what I mean? hmm And, uh, I had to put in the time, man. If I could go back, Ron, I would have just paid my dues, man. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah. Pay the dues, man. That's big time. You know, nothing is given. You right. know what I mean? You got to go in there and work for it. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was better than the players there. You know what I mean? Right. And they knew that I was better. So when I get in these practice, they would literally be trying to beat me up. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the type of practice it was. And, and, and Coach Thompson praised that. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm hollering out foul. Yeah. That's a, that's a <laughs> foul. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh. I had to get in that weight room, man, and, and I, I really just had to put in my dues, man. Because I think my freshman year, I only averaged three, four points a game. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you, how, how'd your time go? Did you have the opportunity to play? Um, you get a lot of, a lot of time uh, your freshman year? Oh, uh, I did. I got some opportunities. I won't mm-hmm. say a lot of opportunities, but they had a lot of seniors when I was there, so. Right. They were they were they were putting in their work and there was I'm trying to I'm trying to lift weights and, mm-hmm. and learn the ropes, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Little things I didn't know, Ron, like, you know, water consumption. You know what right. I mean? Like the athletes, you need to drink a lot of water. Right. Me coming from the burn, no one had ever told me about nutrition or anything mm-hmm. like that. I get up, practice in the morning, I I drank a Coke and I had a Snickers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And being a three hour practice, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? And wonder why I'm hurting so bad. Going you know hard I mean? like too. Going... Ain't no ain't no dead time in the three hour practice. No, none, yeah. dog. I'm sitting there dying and everybody else is just like, you know, they win it. Like yeah. I, I had no idea, man. I just had a lot of things that I needed to learn. hmm So you go through your freshman year and the way it is today, it's a transfer portal. And kids can get in and out of school and bounce out, go to another school, get granted immediate eligibility. And that wasn't the case then. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the case then. Yeah. But you look at it now, and that is the case. With that being said, we'll get what went into you deciding to transfer. Uh, well, first and foremost, it was Coach Thompson mm-hmm. retiring. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were leaving the reins of the Coach Edrick, you know, and if you were inside like we were inside and that the Hoya family, how it is, like, you know what's going on. You right. know what I mean? There's no, no one's hiding anything. It's pretty wide open. So we knew the Coach Edrick was going to be the coach. Mm-hmm. And if you knew what we knew, Coach Ashley didn't want to be the coach. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and they kind of, like, made him do that. And he didn't want even want to be the coach, man. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. At that point, I was like, man, I came up here for a certain thing. And I was playing for Coach Thompson. He's gone. And and and, and I wanted to play right away. Right. So, I decided to transfer. Now, how did that process go as far as you opening up? Um, being able to go to other schools. Did you contact the school? Did they contact you? Or how did that go about? Uh, really, they asked me, you know, of schools that I would be interested in uh, attending, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, once I decided to transfer. But by that time, a lot of schools had got in contact with me already. Right. And uh, I, I took a visit to VCU and and it was just, it was it was live down there in Richmond, yeah. bro. It was, it was it was nice. They just got their new Seagull Center built. Um, and when I went on my visit, they played uh, 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 Louisville. Mm. Uh, VCU versus Louisville, opening night. Mm-hmm. 
packed house. And you know our boy Marcus Maven was in there working. Yeah. But hell, they had they had they had BCU by twenty five at halftime, bro. Really? BCU came all the way back at one. Opening night, eighty five hundred. You know what I mean? Standing room only. Yeah. And I wanted to be a part of that. That's big time. That's big time. So you were sold on VCU. You get the VCU. Yeah. Did you have to sit out? Yes, I did. I so, sat out a year. So what 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 kind of what kind of maturity did you go maturation did you go through in that year sitting out? You know, what did you learn from that year? Um how did the hunger grow? Was it difficult sitting out mentally? You know what I mean? It Talk about was that. Mentally hard. It was very hard. Uh, mm-hmm. at that point, uh Coach Capel. Uh, Jeff Capel, yep. uh, Duke, the head coach at uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh mm-hmm. right now. Uh, he had just came over, you know what I mean? So me and him worked diligently, you mm-hmm. know, that year off, man. Uh, I learned patience, if anything else, man, because yeah. having to bring it in practice every day, yep. you know what I mean? Knowing that you ain't finna suit up at all is, is, <laughs> is hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard, man. But I put in the time, though. Uh, I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me, actually, that, that sitting out of here. What did you learn from being able to sit back and watch the game? Ooh, the game slows down. Right. The game slows down, man. When you're out there and you just, you, you, you're using it all up and you, you just running and ripping and running, dog, when you sit there and just actually get to see it from the sideline, from my perspective, it just all slowed down for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it looked like they wasn't even moving so fast. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And my coach, Coach Cable, always told me, just slow down, man. Just slow down, man. Just be in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's gonna come and just, just, just ride it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I tell a lot of kids that, man. When we're going through training or ment- uh, mentoring sessions, man, like when the game slows down for you, that's when you know you got something. And it slows down at different levels. You know, at high school. Right. All of a sudden, it'll slow down. You get to college, and is everybody going 110 miles per hour? You know right. what I'm saying? It's like, right. man, I was just it was just slowing down now. But when you get to college and it slows down, then you're into another space. You know, you're into another realm, and you start to play a little bit differently. So you getting back on the court. You finally get granted eligibility. Talk about the team you're around, what you can bring, what you will bring into the team once you got eligible to play. What was that experience like? How hungry were you? A how hungry were you to get back out there and be unleashed? Man, man I was very hungry, uh, man. Like at that point, you know, what I'm saying uh, Coach KB used to tell me all the time that I was a dog. At that point, mm-hmm. he didn't call me a dog before that. That at that point, he called me a dog and he told me that I was ready. Our guy Von so Boo just got, got back on here, and just, Michael Claybrooks. They I, both just said the same thing too. That man is a dog. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Yeah, so, so it registered there. But you know, but you know, Ron, I like to ask you, dog. You know, it's like different levels mm-hmm. to that dog. You know what I mean? Not a dog. And man, you have talked about this before. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you, the dog of all dogs, right? <laughs> but I felt I always felt like you you stepped on the court and you felt like you had a point to prove, like right. every time. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. As in me, I'm out there going through the motions on a day where it really don't mean nothing. Yeah. It means something to you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And this, I had to learn that. You know what I mean? If yeah. we you play the same way at the center that you're gonna play right. at Bridgestone. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. I, I was totally different. And yeah. me and Coach Thompson bumped heads with this. You really? know, outside of the, my nutrition thing and I wasn't doing right at all. <laughs> when the games came on wrong. I felt like when those lights come on, it's time to perform. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of like we perform. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So open the night, I forgot who we played, North State or somebody. And uh coach finally put me in. No, we played, yeah, North State. Mm-hmm. And it, it just I got in, bro, and the game just slowed down for me, Ron. And, right. and, and I went off, bro. I had like four, five straight dunks. Ooh. Coach Thompson called the time out. I was like, what the Hell is that dude been there? You know what I mean? Yeah. I told him, Coach, the lights is on. You know what I mean? Yeah. He looked at me puzzled as hell. <laughs> yeah, that's real. So you finally get unleashed. You finally get unleashed to VCU. What, 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 what? Talk to me. What, what, what's going on? Ooh, bro. It, it was, it was, 
Man, Ron, it was a show, dog. I, I remember. I was, I was able. I was, I, so I was at dog. University of Tennessee at the time, and I was able to get up there and go see you yeah. play a game or two. And I remember. Yeah. I remember it. So I want to know from your bro, aspect, though. What? What? what, what I you can do? remember the ex exhibition, bro. Mm -hmm. the exhibition we played on uh, Virginia Union. Uh, yeah. Charles Oakley, Ben Wallace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They weren't there, but that's who we played. And mm -hmm. uh. And uh, a couple of our, our guys from the city came up, right? You know, yep. they packed in the car, came up. Yep. Uh, and, oh, uh, man, I never forget, bro, just seeing them on the front row. I don't know how they got them seats, though, but they <laughs> was right there. Yeah. And and I, I got in the game, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I, the, the game started, bro, and it slowed down. And, Ron, I can remember, bro, it probably was the first minute of the game. Mm -hmm. Um, the ball came off the rim. Yeah. One of our, our team was shot, and the ball came out the rim, man. And and I just went and got that mug. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just seeing my 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 my, my guys in the front row just go ape shit. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. bro? It means something different. God. Yeah. Bro, I had about eight dunks that game, dog. You <laughs> throwing up south and everything in there, bro. It was wow. That's too real. <laughs> <laughs> So you feeding off of it. You feeding off the energy. You feeding off the excitement. You done been there. You know what I mean? You had to sit out a year. Um, going, out, going out of the year, um, you guys got a great chance at making a run. Um, or was that your, your, third, your second year there? My second year. Yeah, your second year there. So leading into that year, I don't want to I don't want to <clears throat> not mention this. What did coming back home playing in the summer do for your game as far as being able oh, to talk man. about those hoop sessions at Vanderbilt because Yo. this is almost a lost thing. They're trying to get it back going, but at that yeah. point, the Vanderbilt hoop sessions in the summer, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Man, Ron, those 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 hoop sessions was everything, though. Yeah. Everything. Two courts running. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got – you got stars and athletes on each flow just going at it. You right. know what I mean? Right. Lose one game, you're going over the other court. And it was just constant. You know what I mean? Like, you couldn't slack. It was hot in there. Right. Ball wet. Yeah. You wet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was just, that was that was one of the most, one of the best experiences I had being, right. over, being over Vanderbilt in the summer. Uh, and I think that summer going into my junior year, uh, my coach sent me to uh, Adidas camp mm -hmm. as camp. a counselor. I was a counselor at Adidas. Mm -hmm. And being at that camp really done something to me, though. Like, yeah. Kobe came and he spoke. You know, yeah. I met Kobe. Rest his soul. Um, I met, uh, um, who's the guy over Adidas? Uh, Sonny Vaccaro. Sonny Vaccaro. I met Sonny and his wife, mm -hmm. you know. Ate dinner with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the players that were there, the, the counselors, we played after the, after the, you know what I'm saying, the high school players played. Right. You know, we get our workout in. And I was there with Joe Forte, uh -huh. uh, uh, Drew Good in Kansas. Uh -huh. I'm talking about everybody was there, Ron. Yeah. Everybody was there. You can, Jason Williams was my roommate. Yeah. You know what I mean, Duke? Yep. And, Oh, it was wild, bro. Yeah. That, that that let me know that I belong. Right. Right. That let Playing me know that I belong. Being on the court with those guys and just going at it all day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dog. That, that gives you that a different let me outlook know that on I, it. I, I, it's, it's a chance I can make some money doing this. Yeah. That that right there, man. That's that's different. And once you get around those guys and you seeing you because you see all the acclaim that they get. You know what I'm saying? Like you. You see all the hoopla on ESPN, and they're like, man, this person right. is. And you're in the same room with them, and you're going out there hooping with them. It's like, okay, yeah. So when you get back to school, yeah. you get back to school, what's that confidence like? And you, you ready to go through the roof? All my confidence was on 10 at that point. Yeah. You know, I was I was captain that year. Uh, and, and Coach Tom, I mean, no, who was it? It was Coach Capel at that point. He right. was just. You know, he put the keys in my hand and just told me to drive us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're only gonna go as far as you you take us. Yeah. And it was it was a good season for me that year, though. It was a really good season. Uh, we lost in the conference final. Yep. Uh, and believe it or not, man, we lost in the conference final. And the conference final game that was my worst game of the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
you know, I, uh, I don't, I haven't, I don't think, I, I know I haven't said this publicly since then or at all, but my dad was in the hospital with cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we had a game on ESPN that night. So instead of channeling my emotions to go out there and do what I was supposed to do for my daddy, I, it, you know, my emotions were just all over the place, man. Right. And I wait to the to the to the to the most important game of the year. Yeah. To not do it on both but I did the whole rest of the season. Right. Right. So yeah. that's that's the thing I, I I like to touch on too, because in the boom boom room, man, we, we get to see another side of, of people, you know, um, especially when I I'm able to bring athletes on and you know, we looked at as athletes as warriors and superheroes, you know, and don't you don't go through anything, you know what I mean, outside of what's going on in the sports realm. People forget that you, you're a regular guy. You know, you got regular problems, whether it be with your family, you know what I mean, uh, yeah. losing loved ones, anything, you know. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's important, man. So what was that like fighting through that, though? What, what was going on with uh, your pops? What, what, what part? What, going on, what was going on with pops? your pops, yeah. Uh, well, that game was just really tough on me, you know what I mean? And, and uh I think I flew out that next early that next morning mm-hmm. because I had to, uh, you know, I was really going home and saying my goodbye. Right. You know what I mean? So you can imagine you got to play a game the night before you got to go do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it was heavy. That's right. It was real heavy. Uh, but my dad's still here. You yep. know what I mean? He was on his deathbed, and it is 20 years later. Mm-hmm. He's still out here ticking. Yeah. So. That's good. Prevalence. That's what's it. That's what's up. Uh, so you, um, after this year, you had a really good year. Y'all losing the finals. Any any thoughts in your mind flirting with the pros? Yes, I wanted to put my name in the draft. Uh-huh. I did. Uh, uh-huh. I wish I had some more um, guidance at that point. You know, right. they were talking second round, and and and, and I, I wish I would have went on the sound with the agent and took a leap of faith, man. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really do. I could go back. I woulda. Right, <laughs> right. So, um, some of the people, man, that kind of showed us love around it. You know, most definitely our guys, Will, Juwan, and your in your instance. You know, what I mean, we it was it was it was the the, the family affair. You talking about the guys that were sitting courtside and things like that. Different reasons to play. Um, another guy, right. man, was Mercer. I remember yeah. you being at VCU and me being at Tennessee. <laughs> Us being able to take trips up uh, when he was playing with the Bulls, you know what I mean, playing with the yeah. Bulls, and when he was playing with the Pacers. But we got to go experience that, man. What did that do right. to to feed to feed the level of hunger for you? You know what I mean, being able to see a guy that we get to play with in the summer. You know what I mean, we stand right. at his house. You know what I mean, the downtown condo. You know what I mean, all all that was lit. You right. know what I mean, us in college being able to see that. Yeah, because I know what it oh, did yeah. for me. Oh yeah, what did that what did that do for you, man? Uh, well, as far as, uh, Mercer, shout out to Mercer, uh, <laughs> too, you know, we looked up to that man, Without you know doubt. what I mean? So, bro, to tell you the truth, at that point in my life, man, I felt like we was rock stars, yeah. man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wasn't hurting for nothing, you know, you got college students to go through what they go through, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You hear the sob, sob stories, but that didn't apply to me. Right, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Ron, I'm married now, right? I've been married here for well, going on four years. Right. I just ate my first pack of noodles. <laughs> Roman noodles. Yeah. I just had my first pack, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just because I wanted to try it. But, right. you know, guys used to have trash bags there. <laughs> yeah. I never wanted it. I was like, dude, if you have, order some pieces or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had a piece of money every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ain't no doubt. So, uh, as far as feeding my hunger... I would kind of say that they handicapped me. You know right. what I mean? Because I, I I still didn't have to work. Right. You know what I mean? Not to that extent, you know, but seeing Mercer do him and being able to experience that, man, that was that's some once in a lifetime type stuff right there. Mm-hmm. Then we had other guys, man, that we could reach out to, man, that Dante Jones going pro in the city. And like, yeah. there was a lot of people. And then outside of the NBA, we had a lot of pros flowing through the city when we were playing in the summer. Over in Vanderbilt, so that was something to tap into, man. Knowing that you were playing against pros and going back to school, and you taking that and going back up in that dominate. You come back um, for another year. How did that year go? Uh, the year went good. Uh, 
I didn't really progress as much as I would have wanted to. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You, you got to think uh, June, uh, sophomore year, I averaged 12, 13 points a game. Mm-hmm. Junior year, I averaged 17 points a game. You know what I mean? Right. I wanted to take that step from, you know, averaging 17 to maybe 20, right. 21, 22. You know right. what I mean? But I averaged 17, 18 that next year. You know what I mean? So it wasn't a. A huge difference, mm-hmm. but our team success was good. We still didn't make the tournament that next year, though, so I was kind of a sour note. Right. But uh, all in all, it was good, man. So what, college, if you could go back and experience one thing in college, what would it have been? You know, we're getting ready for March Madness. Would it would yeah. it have been that March Madness experience? Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely, because, you know, that's what guys – get their name out there. You right. know what I mean? Like right. people hadn't heard of me. They did not see me on TV seven, eight times like Maryland or, mm-hmm. or, or you know what I'm saying? Or the, or the, or the Carolinas right. you know, or the UTs for that matter. Right. You know, VCU, we didn't get as much TV time, but it was live though. You know what yep. I mean? But more people would have got to see me right. if I would have got, if I would have played in that tournament. And, and that's I felt like I missed out on that. That exposure means everything, man. For people that's yeah. listening, man, and you get to that tournament, even now, even now today, like, yeah, you got Instagram and you got all the social media platforms to put your highlights out on. But when you get to that March Madness tournament, yeah, hey, man, it can skyrocket you, man. Like, I, 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 was, I was fortunate to do it my freshman year. And, man, I know what it did, you know what I mean, but as far as putting your name on the scene. Like, it, it does it, you know what I mean? All you need yeah. is that, that announcer one time. To mention your name and it's a sound bite and they take right. off. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was that was it. So you you go pro. You go pro, Bump. Was it a huge difference leaving VCU and going pro? Was that a culture shock also? Well, uh the more definitely. You mean the European part? Just yeah. yeah. Leaving? No, I'm just saying um, I'm saying well, pure. As as just being a professional lifestyle change, like you, you really oh, yeah. are looked at as a you're a bit. It's, it's a business for you then. It's a business, point. man. I mm. seen that coming out of school. Uh, uh, coming out of college, I got some. I, I signed with uh, a Maryland group, PMG. Mm-hmm. Uh, they represented Juan Dixon and Rich Chris Wilcox, Steve yep. Francis at the time, Lonnie Baxter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got with them, and uh, you know. The first thing the guy told me he was, hey, we're not going to do Portsmouth. You know what I mean? And my, my coaches in the MVCU was like, no, you need to be at Portsmouth. Right, right. And uh, I declined. And, you know, from there on, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, I was predicted to go on in the second round. Uh, if I would have got to, and played at Portsmouth, ah, man, I just would have had so many more workouts. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, the more workouts, the better. Yep. Uh, I still got three, four workouts. I think the best one was probably with the Wizards. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got on their summer league team that summer. And um, that's the same summer that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Richard Hamilton signed mm-hmm. for all that money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. So from, from that moment on, I'm, I'm, I wake up and I'm on the way to Greece. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What was it like, man, getting over there in Europe, man? Talk about that experience. Oh, man. Run. Again. Laverne to D.C. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, then D.C. to Greece. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. 14, 15 hour flight, you get off. Nothing is in English. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Just having to find your way and feel your way around. It was, it was a culture shop yeah and then at that time man when people don't know internet wasn't popping like that it was still on dial up like when people wasn't running around with laptops and stuff like that so it was different you gotta go by calling calls to get in touch with your people at home and a huge right. difference man huge difference you know huge man. difference man the world has changed a whole lot in 20 years totally so before before i let you out of here bump we got a little quick takes you know what i mean quick Quick hitters, real quick. Um, give me um, if you got a if you got a list of your top five, top five players. If you got to get a Mount Rushmore, NBA top five, NBA top five guys. Yep. Uh, MJ. Okay. I'm gonna take uh, 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 Kobe. Okay. Bron. 
And then I'm going to go uh, Kareem. Okay. And I'm going to go Shaq. Nice. Now, let's look at people, um, top three guys you've ever played against, whether it be pickup, whether it be uh, in the game, whatever, whatever it may be. Top three guys you've ever uh, played with or against? Played against, in with. I played with Allen Iverson in the mm-hmm. hot box. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, um, what is it, Hall of Famer, yep. Patrick Ewan. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, the best player that I ever played against is Trent Hassel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hands down. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to get Trent on here, man. Trent, I'm waiting on you to get back with me, my man, so I'm putting you out here on play. <laughs> the reason Trent Hassel hasn't been on here, people, because he ain't got back with me yet. So that, that, that's one of the greatest I've seen, too. Uh, Oh, oh, I'm yeah. gonna be honest. That dude. Oh yeah, man. Man, people that don't man do people it don't realize it. Like they don't get to see the Trent we got to see. They got to see the Timberwolves Trent. Yeah. So totally different. Um, now Bunk, give me, um, give me your your guy. If people that don't know Willie Taylor, this guy is tattooed from from from. Head to toe, literally. <laughs> Head to toe, literally. Give me when you got your first tattoo, and give me your top four tattoos that really mean something to you. Okay. Uh, my first tattoo was a uh, basketball on my right arm, mm-hmm. uh, and it says balling going through it. 365 mm-hmm. days of balling. I got it when I was 15. You know, <laughs> I had to lie to the dude in the tattoo <laughs> yep. place. You know what I mean, and uh, and he did. It. My mom came home and was pissed. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. But uh, outside of that, uh, uh, I have a picture of me and Michael Jordan on my back, like we won the championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got his arm raped around my arm, and I got the trophy in my hand. That's probably my best one. Yeah. Outside of that one, probably uh, all the pictures of my kids. Right. Right. Okay. Um. Now. You are a Jordan guy. And people that's listening, man, we appreciate y'all joining in and leaving your comments, man. Michael Wade said, tell him you got your love for Duncan because of me, sucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so there's a lot of people joining in. Appreciate y'all joining in. Uh, quick question, though. With you being a Jordan fan and you having every single pair of Jordans ever created, uh, your favorite pair of Jordans? Uh the cement threes. The cement threes. Cement threes. You gotta be a real Jordan connoisseur, people to know what I'm Cement threes. About, uh oh, or those four, those breeds. Threes mm-hmm. and fours are my favorites, man. Yeah. I just gotta have them, man. <laughs> Style them. Yeah. Threes and fours. Okay. Yeah. All right. Favorite place to have played a game, whether it be pickup, uh a game, professionally, high school, college, best place to play as far as the venue madison square garden msg oh yeah right there in the the coaches coaches versus cancer uh georgetown and being on that floor man it's kind of like uh being at memorial yeah you know what i mean it's like you're on a a dance floor but in madison square garden i don't know if you played in that run never got to play in msg they you can't really see the crowd it's like they're dark yeah you know what I mean? It's like crazy. <laughs> you on stage? It's like you're on the dance floor, man. You got to perform. Yeah. Well, did any yeah. chills when you walked in there and realized, man, I'm this is mad. How many times did you look up and be like, "This is Madison Square Garden"? This is Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And believe it or not, when we went, we we came in through like where they take the trash out. We came up <laughs> this elevator. Yeah. And it's. Smell so bad in there, dog. Like they had the circus in there the night before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The circus. Yeah. And now it's a whole floor in here. You know what I mean? And 40, 50,000 people. That's crazy. That's crazy. So give me the best atmosphere, whether it be the, the, the fans made it the atmosphere, definitely Madison Square Garden. But as far as you playing in the game and 
you feeling it from the crowd. Like whether it be pick and this could be pick up because it was some summer sessions that was really, yeah. really dope also. Yeah, it could be overseas. Yeah. You tell me, what was your best um atmosphere to play in? Oh man, I was in uh I was in Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico shootout. Mm-hmm. And uh we were playing Evansville. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And all the locals came to the game. You know what I mean? It was like a packed house. And I don't man, it was I was just on that game, Ron, man. Like on on. Yeah. Like, I ain't never been on like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had I had twenty five with twelve minutes left to play in the first half. Goodness. In the first quarter. Yeah, the first half. First half. Sheesh. You know what I mean? That's you gotta cooking. be cooking, dog. Twelve minutes left to play in the quarter. I got twenty five. <laughs> You know what I mean, like everything I threw up, it just went in, man. I don't know what happened. What'd you end with? Like that? Since. <laughs> I ended up with forty-one. Yeah, but Jeez. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's tough. Yeah, they were throwing everything at me at that point. But everything I threw up went in, dog. I don't know what it was. It's just one of those games. I ain't never played like that since. Yeah. So okay, last one before we let you out here. Anything you want to leave? Oh, uh, the people with. The people that's tuning in, um, kids maybe that, that, that may be inspiring to play at a, a level that you were able to reach. Um, yeah. Anything, anything you want to leave, anything on your heart, anything on your mind that you want to leave right here in the boom, boom room, the floor Man. is yours. I would say just to stay humble, you know, stay the course. Mm -hmm. uh, treat people like you want to be treated. Uh and for my athletes out there that's, that was in our predicament, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, if I could go back, I would have went to VCU, you know what I mean, out of high school. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I would have had another year. I would have been all-time leading school. You know, all that stuff means something. Mm -hmm. And for me, coming out of high school, it was a, it was a name game. You know what I mean? And, and, and I really should have just, you know what I mean? I would have I would have went to a school like that and stood out. And if I could do it all over again, hell, I would have loved to went to TSU out of high school, huh? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Real, real quick though, real quick, Bunk. Touch on that. Did TSU recruit you? I never got a piece of mail That's from crazy, TSU. Now, I this, don't know. How, I don't know how that even happened. I don't need when you man. get. <laughs> yeah. I don't need. It was probably Vanderbilt and TSU. I never got anything from them. Wow, that is wild, dude. Like, golly. It, Man, I'm going to have to do a whole segment on <laughs> how TSU didn't go get the local talent, man. Like, and I, I love TSU. They just think they couldn't get us. Right. So they like, don't – why even use the, the stamps? Right. <laughs> exactly. They didn't reach out. That's Damn. crazy. That's crazy, Yeah, man. dog. But so, that would have been dope, though. You think about that nowadays, oh bro. You personally, bro? Dude, they could have just so you, got you, half you, of the talent, bro. They could have got half of yeah. the talent in the city. God, dog. It would have been different. Mm -mm -mm. Would have been different. Yeah. So last thing, man, <laughs> before I let you out of here, I, I stole this from Matt Barnes and Stephen uh, Stephen Jackson, man. That was a dope. At the end of their show, they always ask um, who you would like to see in the Boom Boom Room. So who would you like to see in the Boom Boom Room? Whether it be local. Man, believe it or not, bro, I, I like you to see Steve in there. Steve? Yeah, Steve is my guy. Steve who? Uh, from the, from the uh, Matt Barnes. Steven oh, Jackson. Stephen A. Jackson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stephen Jackson, dog. Uh, uh, Stephen Jackson, a real one. Man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, I, I got a chance to sit down and, and crank it up and, and really talk to him uh, a couple of months ago when I went down to, uh, to Memphis when they did another Iver Iverson Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, me and him chopped it up for a while. You know what I mean? Well, and I what? always liked him from his show. I you know too. what I mean? He speaks yep. his mind yep. and everything, bro. I just think... Yeah, if you can get him on, we can we can make it happen. I mean, we can make that happen. I'm putting that on the Willie Bunker man <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Y'all heard it here, man. We gonna get we gonna try to get five. Captain Jack, Steven Jackson, right here in the Boom Boom Room. That'll be legendary, man. Uh, let, let, let's work on that, Bunk. Let's work on that. Okay, bro. Hey, man, I appreciate you taking your time on your Sunday. Get in there, watch the All Star Game. Enjoy your family, dog. The two twins, hold them down. <laughs> I love you, bro. Man, uh, it's, you I know it's all love, love man. All love, Chris, man. Uh, yeah, love y'all, yeah. bro. No doubt, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah. All right, dog. All right, go on. People, that was Willie Taylor. Um, appreciate him coming through, spending some time with us. You know what I mean? 
I know what y'all want to do. Give my boy a round of applause. Give my boy a round of applause, man. He deserves it, man. Willie Taylor came through, showed some love. Great story. Go back and uh, check this out. Make sure you go and subscribe right here in the Boom Boom Room. Throw this up on the screen for you. Go to it. Subscribe to Ron Slate. Click on the link. Subscribe, like, comment, tag, share. Do all of the above. Um, there it is, the page right there on your page. Um, if you need merchandise, we got shirts, the Boom Boom Room shirts. A lot of people been hitting me up on social media. You can DM me, get at me on there, and I'll ship it out to you. The shirts are $35. We got a couple of sweaters left. They're going hot. Um, and it's about to warm up, so you might want to wait till next year. Or you might want a sweater because it's always hoodie season. Everybody can go work out in the hoodie, you know. So hit me up, man. Get at me, um, and, and, and we'll make it happen. Appreciate you guys tuning in to Boom Boom Room. This is the first episode of 2021. You see my boy I just hollered out. You know what I mean? We're going to try to get Steven Jackson. <laughs> and that right there is the Al Horn people. That ain't Big Joe. I know y'all y'all seen the Big Joe interview, and that Big Joe was something. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> That's Al Horn. You know what I mean? So we're going to try to get Stephen A. Jackson on here. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Enjoy your Sunday. We will be back. My next guest will be Chris Lofton. SEC, all-time, all-American, Vol for life, pro from Kentucky, came to Tennessee. Y'all know what it is with Chris Long.